For part E, because we just read off C and D, um, what did you measure? What did you measure? Yeah, I measured two millimeters as well. So therefore, um, the distance here. So if you got a super awesome ruler, right? Maybe you can get more accuracy than mine. I've only got millimeters, okay? So I went 0 0.2 centimeters and I multiplied by 400 like I've been doing, okay? So watching out for your decimal places, what's that going to be? Yeah, 80 centimeters or or zero point, yeah, exactly. Or 0 0.8 meters is fine, okay? Okay, now when you get to part F, I've now got to combine some measurements, right? I've already been given a width there, 7.2 meters. So now I'm going to have to measure this distance here, whoops, and combine them. Right? Do you see? You see where I'm trying to flow? Now you can go ahead and you can calculate that yourself. There's a couple of steps there, aren't there? Uh, or maybe three. You measure with that measurement, which I assume will be like in centimeters and that kind of thing. What are you going to do with that? You're going to have to convert. Once you've converted, the question actually wants an area. So then, thirdly, it's yeah, it's the area of a rectangle, right? So it's length times breadth. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's, it's not as unusual as it sounds because, yeah, well, I, I would be, I would actually expect, does anyone know, does anyone have a hazard a guess, why is there a border here? For, for pipes? For people to, yeah, sure, I, I would say there's, that's plausible. Um, safety, I'd say fire. I'd say fire, actually, because in a school, I happen to know there's a minimum distance that buildings have to be next to each other. Because what would happen if there was a fire and all of the buildings like right next to each other? The fire just goes straight across, right? There's no, there's no gap between them. Okay. Now, in in reality, here because there's trees there, I don't think it's going to function very well as a barrier. But council regulations are all about this, right? You can only have trees up to a certain height. Um, if trees are below a certain height, you're not allowed to chop them down, etc. So actually, it's not that unusual, I don't think, that the garage has this little margin. Okay, now, I'm going to skip over a little bit because you get to a few questions that are just about measurement. Do you guys want to go around and finish it outside? Because you can, I'd be okay with that, but I'm not okay with continuing to stop it. Are you sure? Okay. Have a look carefully for part F, no, G, sorry. To calculate the total length of the pool fences, look carefully. Where are those pool fences? Where are they? Very good. It's the blue lines around the pool. You've got one that's already been given to you. Then you're going to have to measure this one and this one. I think this one's also given to you, isn't it? Yeah, it's also given to you right there. I think, because I'm just checking, I don't think this distance is given to you, right? Yeah, so therefore, I'm going to have to get my ruler out again, measure it out, and then include it with the other ones. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, you could do it that way because you've already worked that out. In fact, let's do that. Let's do that. So I'm going to call this length here. Let's give this a name so that we can stop talking about this length, that length. What would you like me to call it? H. How about H? It's a height. Well, on my diagram, it's a height. Okay. If it's H... And I'm measuring it in meters, because everything else has already been given to me, remember? I've got the two meters over here, the four meters over here. We had it suggested that we've already worked out, I'll put it in red, we've already worked out this length, because you measured it, and earlier on you also measured that length, because you also measured it, right? Um, let's have a look, we wrote it down, didn't we? That little distance was, was 80 centimeters, 0.8 of a meter. Has someone measured the garage 1 .1. and converted? 1.1? Are you sure? Really? I got 1.2, I think. Yeah, well this is the thing, right? This is, so we're gonna be, we're gonna have slightly different numbers, but that's okay, that's all right. One point, well, let's go, with one, I'm hearing 1.1 a lot, okay? So for part G. Once you measure 1.1, that means you actually get from that 
something in meters, right? What do I have to do again? I've got to multiply by 400, 400. So I'm going to do this. H, it's going to be 20. Take away, what are the two things I'm subtracting? There's the 0 0.8, which is between the garage and the fence. And then you just told me that this distance here is 1.1 centimeters on the plan. What's that in reality? It's 4.4 meters, very good. Okay, so I'm going to combine those together. I have subtracted the 0 0.8, I should subtract the 4.4 as well. So what does that give us? Can someone calculate it? 20 take away. Point eight? 14.8? 14.8, yeah. yeah, okay. Now that's just one of the fences, right? That's one of the fences. So I'm gonna say total fence, because I've got to include all the other ones, is the 14.8 that you guys just told me. Uh, and then there are the other two lengths which we've just been given in the diagram. If you come back, you can see there's the four, right there, it's a bit small, and then there's the two up there. So plus four, plus two, that's six. Looks to me like 20.8 meters. What do you think? That you see it? Yeah, you see the, pro the process we went through? Okay, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I, that was an extra thing. So what we did was we measured the garage, right? We measured it and what we found was on the drawing, it was 1.1 centimeters. But in reality, it's 400 times bigger than that. Yeah. Right? So then I had to multiply that by 400, which gives me 4.4 meters. Okay? All right. Um, H, I, and J. H, I, and J, if you have a look at them, they all have to do with the pool. So we should consider them together. I think we've got enough space here. It says calculate the area of land taken up by the pool to the nearest square meter. You've got your diagram in front of you. Do we need to measure any of the pool with our ruler? So it has a curvy bit, right? Now, them having not said anything else, I think it's okay to assume that that's a semicircle, okay? So therefore, I've got a rectangle on the top, this guy, and then I've got a semicircle on the bottom, okay? To work out the area of a semicircle, what distance am I going to need on there? I'm going to have to use that four meters up the top. That's a diameter. I don't usually use diameter for my area formula, though. Yeah, I usually use the radius, which is two. Okay. All right, so let's work out this uh, pool then. The area of the pool is, there's a rectangle. The dimensions of the rectangle are, look at your map, look at your plan, sorry. Four by eight. So I'm gonna write four by eight. And then you're gonna add on half of a circle, a semicircle. That's half of pi, and you guys told me the radius was two times two squared. You happy with that? Uh, a lot of this we can do with our heads. Four by eight is 32. Um, you've got a half, a pi, and a four. So that's gonna be two pi. And now I actually need my calculator, right? Um, two pi is like six point something or other. Someone wanna actually punch that in for me? Mm -hmm. Yep, so when we add that 6.28 to 32, it's gonna be 38.28 to eight dot dot dot. It looks like they want it to the nearest square meter. So I'm going to round that off. And I'm going to say, I'm rounding it to the nearest square meter, like so, okay? Now, part I and part J are moving from that to volume to capacity, and they go pretty easily together. So for part I, this is the cross-sectional area. Yeah, we've got the bird's eye view, we're looking at from it right down. And they're telling us you've got an average depth. So I'm going to say volume equals that 38 that we just said times that average depth. That's 1.2. I should point out this is all still approximate, but it looks like it's going to be, what, 40, 45, 45, yeah, so about 46. Uh, it doesn't said a nearest it hasn't given us a nearest unit but i'm going to stay with the nearest units we had before so if i had 45.6 i'm going to approximate that to 46. uh what units is this is a volume cubed very good so this is to the nearest cubic meter 
Last one for the pool, and I'm going to get you to try and do K on your own. Uh, find the amount of water. So this is a capacity question. So I'm going to go from volume to capacity, and they helpfully remind you that a cubic meter, a cubic meter is really big, right? Uh, a cubic meter has a thousand liters of water in it, uh, as you can see down there in the question. So what am I going to have to do with the previous number? It's pretty simple. I just multiply by a thousand, right? So it's 46 by that kiloliter there. So there's my number.